everyone, welcome to the STAR OMOC tutorials. My name is Priya Desai and I'm the Research and Development Manager for Biomedical Informatics uh, here at Research ID at Stanford Medicine. Um, this is part five of tutorial one. Uh, in this video, we're hoping to talk about, you know, why uh, we picked the OTC OMOC CDM as our common data model of choice um, and what its salient features are. So you may ask, um, you know, why are we picking the OTC OMOP CDM? So, well, the OTC OMOP CDM is an open source data model uh, and it's maintained by OTC, which is a public private partnership. Um, to give you guys a little bit of history, um, OTC stands for Observational Health Data Sciences and Informatics, um, OTC, and it's pronounced as OTC as in, you know, Homer's OTC. Uh, it's an international collaborative and whose, whose goal is really to create and apply open source um, data analytic solutions to a large network of health databases with the ultimate goal of improving human health. Um, the ODC team comprises of academics, industry scientists, healthcare providers and regulators and their formal mission is to transform medical decision-making by creating reliable scientific evidence about uh, both disease and healthcare delivery and the effects of medical intervention, um, and to do this through large-scale analysis of observational health databases uh, for both population-level estimation and patient-level predictions. Um, Odyssey grew out of uh, the observational medical outcomes partnership project, which was a public-private partnership established in the U.S. Um, in the early, um, around 2010, to uh, inform the appropriate use of observational healthcare databases for studying the effects of medical products. So it was a five-year project, um, and it developed new methods in observational research and established an observational uh, research laboratory. And at the conclusion of this five-year project, the OMOP research investigators uh, initiated the Odyssey effort. The centerpiece of this OMOP project was the development of the OMOP common data model. Um, so, and, and this common data model represents healthcare data from diverse sources, sources in a consistent uh, but standardized way. Um, the CDM is a, it's an informational model, so in which the encoding and relationships among concepts are explicitly and formally specified. And this is this is really a cornerstone. Um, I, I repeat that it's it's a model in which the encoding and relationship between concepts are explicitly and formally specified. Um, the Odyssey team has adopted and continues the maintenance of this model and its associated uh, vocabulary services. So the overall approach is to create an open network of observational data holders and require that the data holders translate their data into the OMOP CDM. So each element in the participants database must be mapped to the approved CDM vocabulary and placed in you know in the common data schema as a result this approach you know creates an opportunity uh, to implement a number of existing data exploration and evidence generation tools um, and to implement these in multiple centers around the world uh, allowing for participation in worldwide studies because every any given query should you know can be executed at any site with minimal modification so this really enables uh, multi-center global analysis to be executed uh, and you know allows you know allows this ability to pursue cross-institutional collaborations uh, the other big benefit is that it allows accelerated research due to easy access to de-identified data that is mapped onto these standard vocabularies um, and this is really because under this model, the data is always retained at the participant's site. So this really simplifies patient and business privacy issues. So the analysis is carried out locally and the results are transmitted to the coordinating center where they can be uh, studied sort of at a population uh, level or, you know, or aggregated as, as appropriate. 
Uh, the consortium also oversees the maintenance and uh, you know development of free of analysis tools, and all of these are available open source. So it really gives you access to um, you know a, a, a lot of these these free tools. Um, the standardization of analysis has consistent, you know, and the standardization of analysis, uh, you know, consistently trying to design studies to use the best practices. This is sort of really um, sort of up to the bar and standardized analysis analyses across centers. Um, you know, they have developed a suite of tools to analyze the data, to characterize the data. Um, and the one thing that we have found particularly useful here at Stanford is that the community is extremely active, extremely engaged and very helpful. So Stanford decided uh, about two years ago at this point to, you know, to adopt the OMAP common data model. It took us about a year to do all our ETL and transform the Stanford EHR into OMAP. Uh, but we have found the community to be immensely helpful. They have, um, you know, you can post questions in the forums. Um, and since it's an international collaboration, somebody somewhere is always awake. And typically, you know, you will get answers, you will get suggestions, um, you will get pointers to whatever questions you may have. Uh, if you ask these questions on, on the Odyssey forums, um, you know, within 24 hours. The salient features of the OMOP CDMs. The one um, really important feature of OMOP to always be aware of is that it's patient centric. Um, what that means is only records uh, of clinical events that actually happened make it into the OMOP CDM. So the OMOP CDM does not contain records of things like missing labs, uh, you know, canceled appointments those sort of events do not make it into the OMOP CDM. Uh, it has about 38 tables and these tables, um, you know, contain the data typically needed in clinical trials and observational studies. So, you know, you have a table for drug use, you have a table for procedures, you have a table for um, the condition era. Uh, I'm sorry, for conditions, you have a table for condition era, like what is the length, how long did that particular condition persist? Uh, it's designed to record healthcare data from all of the world. So the definitions in general need to be really broad and flexible. And the way they do that is they, uh, you know, dif different sources in different parts of the world may use whatever vocabulary they use locally. But uh, OMAP picks one vocabulary for each domain area and then will supply mapping tables from whatever you currently store your data in into what the, the CDM wants. So for example, all the diagnosis codes are in SNOMED. All drugs um, you know, follow, follow the, the Rx norm um, vocabulary. And OMOP actually will, they, they provide you with that mapping. So the source data stays in whatever you use locally, but when you convert your data into OMOP, um, your data is mapped into uh, the vocabulary that the CDM um, requires. Um, the, the OMOP CDM is set up in such a way that it actually preserves the data provenance. So you keep, um, you know, the source data, the, you know, you, you keep what the original source data was. So you can always track back to uh, what is it that you translated it from. Um, this is just to improve transparency. Um, the other interesting thing is that the vocabulary and data model are blended. And what I mean by that will get clearer as we you know, go along in the tutorial, uh, because whenever you're presented with an OMOP uh, CDM, so if you, you are given the Stanford OMOP CDM, not only are you giving the data tables, you're also given the corresponding vocabulary tables. So they always travel together. And um, I think this is really important because you should be able to do the translation of what your data, your OMOP data means, uh, because the vocabulary is with you, you know, at the same time. 
This uh, database is extendable and evolving. Um, the consortium is very active and um, you know, new concepts are being brought in, old concepts are being uh, phased out um, and so on. And the database is platform independent. So Stanford has been the first institution that has actually uh, chosen to um, store and um, use its OMOP data so basically store its OMOP data in, in BigQuery, for example. Most other institutions have chosen to go with Postgres or uh, MySQL or whatever. Stanford has chosen to go with, uh, with, Big, uh, with BigQuery. Okay, so go ahead, let's go ahead and actually see some of um, this evidence in action. Um, you know, I, I, I told you about how OMOP really allows for uh, multi-institutional cross-collaborative studies. So go ahead and actually open this um, this URL. Uh, I have opened it here in this other tab. Um, and this is a network study that is on right now. Um, it's called Charybdis, and it basically stands for Characterizing Health Associated Risks and Baseline Disease in the SARS-CoV-2. Um, so as you can see, uh, they're trying to characterize this phenotype. So you have, um, you know, all different kinds of cohorts that have been created. Uh, you can actually find the definition of these cohorts in um, in Atlas. I'm, we're going to talk about what Atlas is in, in I believe, our third tutorial. Um, but here you can actually see, um, you know, here are your cohort counts. So persons with influenza diagnosis or positive test um, in 2017 or 2018 with at least 365 days prior observation. Uh, but you can see here are, here are the, these are all the, uh, the data sets, the databases that have participated in this study. And then these are the number of people in that cohort um, the definition of this cohort. So, you know, that is the cohort name and you can, you, if you go ahead and you actually click on cohorts, you can actually find um, what that, the meaning of that cohort is. So what exactly is that cohort definition? So for example, asthma COPD step three is here and Um, I'll just wait a couple of seconds for this cohort definition to... So I'm going to go back and I'm going to say that. Um, and so here is the cohort definition for asthma COPD step three. Um, which is people having any of the following and then they have specified exactly how you define the cohort. Um, we're going to go through a lot of all of this in detail as the, as the tutorials progress, but I just wanted to give you guys an example uh, or show you um, an actual network study being done and how the evidence that has been collected so far is available for everyone to, to view, see, it says, you know, these results are still preliminary, but whatever results have come in, are they, you know, shared with, um, shared with everyone. You can look at what are the databases that are actually participating in this study. So you have CRPD, which is Clinical Practice Research Data Link. Um, it's a government not-for-profit uh, research service by the, um, funded by the NHS. You have the CUAMC, this is University of Colorado uh, Medical Campus. You have CUIMC, which is Columbia University um, Arving Medical Center. You have um, um, Health Verity, you have um, IQVIA. Um, you can see this is, you know, the Stanford, um, I'm sorry, the OMOP data, Optum data set, my bad. Optum data set, and then um, Stanford also participated in this data in this uh, particular network study, and and that's us, um, the Star OMOP. Um, so this is just you know a quick um, example for you guys to just see um, see this evidence in action, 
and in the next tutorial we're actually going to go a little bit deeper into um, the common data model and just sort of understand the schema um, you know at a 10,000 foot view and then and then we'll go into details um, and explore each table uh, one at a time um, all right thanks for um, watching this and I hope to see you guys next time the preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.